lost a generation and then it, it seems to fall, the, the flower begins to fade. No, to me that's natural law, or if you like, supernatural law. No, I'm intrigued about it, I mean, because Newton, you know, Newton has studied these, these cycles, his large part of his later life. I've only read some of the documents because so little is available and published. Yeah. And he's looking into these cycles and he's drawing charts and charts of these cycles. Because, yeah. you know, he wanted actually to predict when the Antichrist was coming. And this Indeed. Kind of no, absolutely. And now today, of course, currently in the 20th century, this, I think, very interesting guy, Terence McKenna, <coughs> Studying these cycles in terms of the Whiteheadian notion of novelty, yes, comes in. That's uh, interesting. The phases. Yes, of that's the cycle. very. Yeah. And uh, of course, again, rather you just going different cycles. We see that in our global situation, like many are coming together and coincide, and going to coincide. And he puts a date on it, 2012, yeah. which happens to coincide with critical times predicted in South America and the Hopi Indians and so on. And um, but this notion that time itself is structured is so intriguing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, of course, it's your field, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say it was my field. It's the thing I've been looking at for the last 10 or more years because I'm fascinated by the progress of humanity uh, as it comes and it moves, I say, from the savage to the barbaric. Let me define the savage is when my village is the center and anything outside is hostile. The, savage, the, uh, the barbaric is where you get warring tribes who at least trade. And the civilized is where, in fact, you get cities where <coughs> you get trade, industry, and then people of leisure, the priests. Oh, people of leisure, I love it. Um, well, people of leisure can become scientists and artists yes. and thinkers and mystics because they have to be supporters. They're the three. They're the three graduations of of, uh, the, of anthropology. That to me, that this is an important thing about the, the simple thing about scale you've introduced. Because now we're in a position where even the kind of Toynbean civilization is inadequate because you've faced... And it always strikes me that people don't go around shouting about the significance of this in the The first time ever, rather than in terrestrial history, in principle, all the diverse cultural yeah. traditions of the world can meet face to face. This is... A, we live in a very interesting time. And They're it's stressful. Well, it's, it's, it's awesome. Awesome, yes. It's, all, it's awesome. This is one of the things I hope people bring out at the conference about this. You know, it's, 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 it's unprecedented challenge because you could always, in a sense, get by it in the past. You know, move somewhere else, so to speak. Now you can't. And that's it because there's something... It's very similar to the spread of printing. When the, printing, uh -huh. when the printing press came in and people began to read books other than those ordered by the church, that's when you got the beginning of individuation, when people began to think for Absolutely themselves. Absolutely right. And that completely shook the medieval model, which was falling apart anyway. You know, there was the Pope and the King and the Cardinals and the Lords and the and peasants right at the bottom. That completely blew that away. Completely blew that away. And I think the same thing with cyberspace. Very similar. But uh, what I perceive is, while there'll be people talking to each other, chattering away on cyberspace, whether there will be any lifting consciousness remains to be seen because it may just simply repeat itself. You know, in other words, rather like a bad radio station that's just putting on bad music. The fact you can uh, have these conversations about the most banal subjects or mm. market prices. What I'm interested in is, where's the next lift of consciousness? How is that going to manifest? It should be very interesting. There. But uh, as you say, there's an absolute continuity between the first attempts at printing yeah. and cyber present day cyberspace and there's a suggestion from the Indo-European point of view or the European point of view that just if you make available more facilities for interaction between more independent elements you are bound to start innovating yeah. you know. but always when the people are innovating it is judged for the large part not entirely for the large part as being like immoral or degeneracy. To give you a kind of concrete example about this, which, you know, really, you can appreciate why it does upset people. You know, things like video technology and things like the net were accelerated in their development because of pornography. Mm -hmm. The video industry wouldn't have developed without pornography as fast as it did. Or crime movies, or sex movies. Yes, it sex movies again. You yeah. see, people don't realize the amount of money which comes from that source, yeah. at least technology. Now, if you can go tut, 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 this is a bad thing, you can do that. Yeah. 
but that's the nature of people and it tied in my mind with it is because there's one more thing from Burstein the American historian I again went to a lecture by him on libraries yes. and he made a wonderful statement he said a principle of a very good library is that it contains a large number of bad books <laughs> I like 